no way way is wrong no i've got my maths wrong it's, it's like goal difference and stuff and weird things like that so but I, I i might not still win so that was a good hour's waste of editing I'm the worst football manager ever and welcome back to the Sutton Scramble everyone, Football Manager 2016 and I'm the Sutton United manager and we have three games left of the season. So by winning this game today against Bishop Stortford you can see here on the league there would still at least be six points between me and Bromley but there are still two games to go so if Bromley then won their last two games and I lost my last two games, we'd then be even on points. But if you look at the goal difference, 31, 41, 11 points in it, 11 goals in it. So really, it kind of means I should win, right? Unless I lose like 5 nil and like 7 nil and 7 nil, then I'm out. But with all going well, if I win today, this could be good. Yes, I found my glasses, so... Everything can calm down now, so stop hounding me. I know we've sent out search parties up and down the country, but they were found just just like over there. So we go into today's game against Bishop Stortford after the most epically dramatic intro ever. Okay, and before I go into today's game, I need to tell you some news. There's bad news, followed by good news, followed by bad news so what do you want to hear first let's do them in order shall we so the first bad news is those of you who remember the last video you watched in in episode 40 of the Sutton Scramble I had a one all draw with Hayes and Yedding now I haven't encountered any crash dumps at all in Football Manager 2016 until this day literally after the game finished I finished recording finished editing either because even because I hadn't actually closed down football manager edited the video then went to close down football manager as i clicked the button boom crash dump so i lost the game so that's the bad news i was like oh because i hate when that happens it feels i feel like it's really bad and as if i'm cheating do you know what i mean the good news is i then played them again and i won two nil so that was a good sign if anything as you can see here Corey blackett taylor scored on the 31st minute and the 59th minute archie thomas got man of the match we just seem to play so much better i i played exactly the same formation exactly the same team and uh, as you can see here i won two nil however as you can also see from this screen the bad news is as in bad good bad bad news is is that this fella here Dan Fitchett the one that's tweeted me the hero that is Dan Fitchett is injured as you can see here from his injury he's expected he's got he's, he's fractured his arm so he's going to be out for four to five weeks so that's basically him done for the season now which absolutely sucks however one of the things I have noticed about Dan Fitchett so it's bad news then good news then bad news but the good news is is I was looking at his coach report and actually look at what the, one of the cons is top con if you had to say what his top con is then his top con is actually he doesn't feel comfortable playing in big matches. And what are these next few matches going to be? Massive. So in a way, he's not the worst player to have got sent, you know, injured. I, I feel that I could actually do all right without him. Dare I? Have I just said that out loud? I've just said that out loud. I'm sorry, Daniel. I'm sorry. If you're watching this, then I'm really sorry. I didn't mean it. We need you. I'd also love to know... If like real footballers, if they see themselves on Football Manager and see something like that, doesn't feel comfortable playing in big matches, do they get really like hurt by it? Do they feel like, well, thanks Sports Interactive for just shoving that label on me? I'd be a bit, I'd be a bit annoyed personally. And so, without further ado, let's press on to the game, and I'll show you what my team looks like for this match, and we'll crack on with things. We're playing Bishop Stortford, who are third in the league. They're, they're too far away from second place, I think. So they're in. I, I don't even think they're 100% confirmed in the playoffs yet. But obviously they're doing well. It's not going to be an easy game for me. It looks like they're doing some kind of a 4-1-3-2 formation. They're obviously going defensive against me as well. It's, a lot of these teams are just putting defensive walls up against me at the moment. And it's really, really annoying. But this is what the team looks like. Ben Killip is back in goal for today. Um, I feel that Mitch Walker, he's OK, but... I I think Ben Killett's played most of the se the season. He had he's had a bit of a bad stint, but I'm hoping that he'll come through for these final final three games and really show up for me. Really need him to. Then at the back we've got Hamad Lowell on the left. We've got Jim Fenland on the right. We've got Hamad Lowell, by the way, is on a wing back. He likes to push forward, so I'm just telling him to push forward. And on the back, we on the right, Jim Fenland is a, is a full back. Reason being is that Vilma Lainen is really pushing forward into into attack. He's actually playing as a um, inside forward today which means that that left side is going to need some beefing up in the middle of the pitch. So hopefully Hamadlo will fill that space. And then Black 
Rocket Taylor, however, is a slightly more defensive um, right midfielder. So we've got him as a winger support, um, which means really Jim Fennon doesn't need to go up, which suits him anyway because he prefers to stay back. Then you've got da- um, Dara Lee and Wes Harding in the centre back. You've got um, Davies, Archie Davies, and Archie Thomas in the centre of the pitch. Um, although saying that, Archie Thomas is on a 77%. I better change that. Okay, so I'll just change it up now. George Marsh is playing centre, and we've got um, Archie Thomas isn't even on the bench, actually. Harry Grant is on the bench waiting. He's, he's, got, full, he's got full fitness, and he's actually in quite a good form as well. So that's that. Um, and then up front today, we've got Eddie Ketty and Karel Kiyembe. Eddie Ketty coming in to replace um, Dan Fitchett. Um, Eddie Ketty likes to play as a defensive forward as well, similar to Dan Fitchett. So I hope that this is going to work. We can only hope. We can only hope. Okay, so we've got 4-2-4. Four, four, four. Um, we've gone in control in terms of our sort of, you know, pace of things. And uh, then we just got to see how we do. we just got to see how we do. Okay, so what we probably need to do here is bring up some uh, some some latest scores. Bromley um, in need of a win. League table up there as well. Let's see what these all look like. There we go. Oh, and Kirill Kim has a shot meanwhile that goes wide unfortunately I'm going to put that up in the middle of the pitch there ok so Bar- Bath are playing Bromley if we win then Bromley have to win um, if we draw I think Bromley could do with at least a draw as well um, so it's as simple as that Bromley have basically got to match us or beat us in what we're doing it's Kiembe with a shot it's gone in it's gone in yes yeah boy <laughs> has gone up this could be it everyone this could be it if I win today and Bromley do worse than me then I have won the league it's as simple as that it's as simple as that it's Kiembe with a shot top right corner oh and it's a fist double fist bump in the air for Karel Kiembe we are well on our way now Phil Malanen can he get the cross here's a mad low out there's the cross Kiembe and he's made it two he's made it two <laughs> That's my Bollywood dancing, by the way. Obviously, you can... Going back to my roots, isn't it? Here's Hamad Lawal. There is Kiembe. Smashes it. We're five minutes into the game, and we are 2-0 up. And Bromley and Bath are still 0-0. League table. Let's just have a little flick at the league table. As it stands, I've won the league. As it stands, I'm promoted. It's the Madler. Wow! Block it! It's made it three! It's three nil! It's three nil! It's three nil! Pinecone! Yes, we brought him back in! Pinecone! We're three nil up! We're three nil up! What? a day to play so well Kiembe on the 4th minute, 6th minute Blackett Taylor on the 13th look at him, tuck it away oh my word my goodness, this is amazing right, let's keep our eyes on these guys Bromley are winning ok, so (laughs) this game now means nothing in a way because Bromley are are now 2-0 up everyone, against Bath you can see there uh it looks like Hodby and Hewitt have scored two goals for Bromley so they're 2-0 up oh man I'm playing so well but it's still we still haven't won it yet come on Bath all I need to see is that one game you know so I'm just going to bring it down here Blackett Taylor with a cross to Eddie Ketty oh and it's good in it's good in off the underside of the bar <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it. There he goes. There's the cross. Oh, there it is. And Eddie Ketty. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Oh, and he's doing a little backwards run because he's just in celebration so much. Wow. Okay, Bromley are now 3 0 up as well. So this looks like it, it is going down to the final two games of the season already. We're 4 0 up. Bromley are 3 0 up. Both teams absolutely killing it. Medford Smith tries to push up the pitch, but Fenland picks up the loose ball. Mar- Marsh across to Davies, across to Ketty, across to Kiembe for his hat trick. Oh! Offside. And we are 4 0 up. Okay, so we're going straight back into the game. 
Um, second half now, I tell you what we might do is just slow it down just a little bit. We're going to lower tempo. My goodness, 4 nil up. This is incredible stuff. 63% um, of the possession we've got here. Um, far more of the game than they have. There's Wills on the ball, and uh, we've blocked it out, and it's gone out for a throw now. This is fantastic. Honestly, epic stuff. Here's Bill Mullane with a free kick here. Cross into the box and it's cleared out. He picks out a loose ball though. Oh, and he tries to get it in, but uh, didn't work that time. Jim Fenton, meanwhile, oh, picks up the loose ball. We're picking up every loose ball at the moment. And here's Archie Davis bringing it into the centre of the pitch there. And it's cleared from uh, Bishop Stortford. And Kirkby's now onto it and he's forwarded it to Goldberg. Now on the counter attack here. Bishop Stortford pumps it forward to Goldberg. Lovely pass to Goldberg. Great challenge. Block, but Kirkby picks up the loose ball again and we clear it but only as far as Pastorek who absolutely ruins Bishop Stortford's day with that they're not playing well here um, as in Bishop Stortford oh, so we're playing we're, we're, we're playing amazing ok so just to let you know so far this game we've made two changes Emmanuel Bende and Bende came on at half time for Dara Lee who's tired and Steven Schumacher's now come on for um, Archie Davis who again just through tiredness Nobody's playing badly today. They're all playing pretty. I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, really, Bromley are now 4 0 up as well. Look at that. <laughs> Crikey. Is Karel Kiembe. And is Eddie Ketty. Oh! I kind of want to beat Bishop Stortford by more than what Bromley are beating Bath. Just so I can say to Bromley, like, in your face, mate. So, Memphis Smith for Bishop Stortford. Here's Pastor on a yellow card now. And uh, Pillbeam on an attack here come on challenge him Pillbeam through to Goldberg don't let him score well done Killip that's what he was like at the beginning of the season just no matter what was shot in him he was just boom saving it boom saving it it's great stuff great great stuff ok yeah, Elliot Wheeler's now on for Wes Harding now and that's all my subs are used up for today but I just need to preserve some of those, those defenders energy so if it's oh look Bath have got one back against Bromley so we're still we're now beating them in terms of getting the better goal scores got a goal difference in it it's all about goal difference now Marsh Blackett Taylor go on go on lads oh unlucky and Bishop sort of try and get it clear but we've got the ball again Fenland Schumacher Marsh the crowd are up for this one aren't they loud crowd today and it's Kiembe can he get his hat trick oh mate Bill Malanen with a cross no oh. Madlowell yeah, oh poor throw straight to them and um and Bende just thumps it to the halfway line. Meanwhile, Pillbeam's on the attack here. Pass direct. Med Medford Smith. Pillbeam. Vincent. Come on, challenge him. Challenge him. Get close him down, boys. Close. Redford. Good build up play from Bishop Stortford there, but they've um, hit it over the bar again. And with three minutes to go, it looks like we. Well, it's a, it's a nil nil half, but four nil in total. Ah, oh, they'll be winding the clock down now. Let's just uh, take a breather. Defensive. Let's waste time. Not as worth it. Ten seconds. They'll still try and attack, though, won't they? They're still going for it. But it won't be good enough. What a victory against third place Bishop Stortford. We have won 4 0. They've done exactly what was needed. Absolutely killed it. We got what we wanted to do. A thoroughly professional job. Corey Blackett Taylor gets man of the match with a 9.3. With a goal to his name. Karel Kiembo with two. Eddie Katie with one. Heroes. Absolute heroes. And so, if we now leave this match and look at the league, let's see what we're facing in this next, the next episode of the Sutton Scramble. OK, so here is the league. As you can see here, there are two games remaining now. It's between us and Bromley Steel, six points in it. It basically means that unless we lose how many, by how many goals? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By ten goals, which, in honesty, Bromley have just won 4 nil, and we've just won 4 nil. But, no, they won 4-1, we won 4 nil there's still that possibility this is looking very good guys so join me for the next episode where it is very possible that i might be promoted is this gonna be a new time a new era of the worst football manager ever only time will tell but thanks for joining me today and join me next time for some more if you do like this stuff do hit the like button and uh, and if you want to see more and you want to find out when i'm uploading videos so it pops up or whatever 
do hit the subscribe button and join me for the journey of this thanks so much for all your support really appreciate it and uh, until next time i'll see you later Oh, the, uh, I think they're on to me. Post-match press conference about to begin. Sutton United have scored a high proportion of their goals originating from crosses this season. Can you offer any insight as to why it's proven to be such an effective means of scoring? It doesn't say anything about the match engine here.